Welcome everybody. Welcome to the largest education festival in the world, the 37 days of live event, student university webinar season four, get connected. Today is a beautiful day, a Friday, and we are going to cover an important topic, which covers the major question of why US, why UK, or why Canada? I'm sure basically uh, you will not like to miss this one. And if you have your friends and families who are interested, please invite them because we'll be starting the sessions now. Uh, very important that as many people join in because this webinar that I'm doing is for you. It's not for me, it's for you. And if you are here, it gives us enough satisfaction and motivation to do better. So do invite your friends and families and let them know that we are going to start. Okay. So let's start with basically introduction of the company Education Abroad Casting Center. It started in Feb 2000. It, it, the vision was to educate the youth by providing them with study abroad career options worldwide. Our mission is to help 100,000 students, sorry, 10 lakh students. Uh, high, high schools and graduate students at your career growth using free application technology. We have till date counseled more than 13,500 students. Our USP is that we have, we do counseling for all countries to all levels, starting from seventh grade to PhD and to all major programs. We provide guaranteed admission because of the research based counseling that we do and which helps us to match the student's profile with the admission requirements. Now let's come to our topic of why US, why Canada, why UK? Now this is a very important question uh, for many of you, because uh, if I have to come talk to you in statistics, around 1,93,000 students went to, went to US from India in 2019, as per report. In Canada, it was around 220,000 students. Again, in 2019 report. And in UK, it was 55,000 students that went to UK from India. So this, if I compare with the total number of students that went, is around 750,000. So when you're talking about 750,000 students and you take all these numbers, you probably are talking about 60% of the students that are going to these three major countries. That is US, Canada, and UK. And hence this question is very important because it can influence your career decision. It can help you to decide which country you want to choose. And mind it well, basically there are no such videos which can cover all these three countries in one video. There are no such videos or information available on Google which can compare these three countries and can tell you which is on parameter basis, which you feel is better. So in that sense, this is probably the only information that could be available. I may be wrong, but I, you know, I have not found anything till now. And nobody does it because it's risky. It's very risky to compare a country A with a country B because each country is unique. There are so many points in each country that has to be taken. So it is be unjustified to compare with few parameters. But based on the 21 years of study abroad constant experience, I have tried to create, you know, add few points and try to compare. The, though I am, you know, it may be not be the exact comparison that you may be looking off, but most of you will be able to come to a decision on base of which country you would like to go abroad. Also important is you have to understand that this is a 37 days free webinar. And this is for you. So do like, do subscribe. If you have missed our basically uh, previous videos, go to YouTube, search for EACC Education Abroad Counseling Center. You will find all our, uh, on, in the playlist, you will find all the videos, which includes the success skills, which includes the student questionnaire, which I answered by the university officials and the university webinar. Do basically subscribe and press the bell icon to get the updates. You know, you may have a lot of entertainment videos, but this is uh, something that can 
help you in your career decisions, which can help you to become successful in your life. So don't miss this important information and go through it. All the information, all the videos are of value addition. Okay. It is not that basically, you know, for just covering up, we have given, created something. All the videos are value added information. If, you know, do comment about the videos. If you want, let us know how do you feel, give your feedback, and this will help us. Also, basically, you know, uh, the video is live on Facebook. So if you can like, put your comments, you can share. Probably more people will know and more people can get connected. In this way, our objective of reaching out to maximum students can be fulfilled. Okay. So let's go. Today's session would be more theoretical uh, comparatively. Uh, I hope uh, you like it till the end. Now, regarding why US, okay? USA has a long history of more than, uh, it has a long history and of students going from India to US, okay? So why this long history is important? Because you know the trend. You understand how many students have gone each year and whether it is increasing or decreasing. With that, you will understand whether you are looking at the right country or not. If it is increasing, that means the growth opportunities are always high, and that's why people are going abroad to that country. If it is decreasing, you know that basically, you know, people are not able to get jobs. That's why they are coming back. Don't take this COVID-19 situations because these are uh, unusual situations where the country's borders were closed or the visa consulates were closed, people were not able to get visas. So the numbers could be a little less, but otherwise you can take this data. So when I'm saying that two lakh, around 1 lakh 93,000 students went to US, it probably, you know, it went from 2 lakh, it came to 9, 1 lakh 93,000 during the pandemic time. So there was a drop, but now the numbers are again increasing. And USA, if you see on a long-term basis, the numbers have always increased. So it's a, one of the country which is where the numbers have always increased. You know, probably uh, from India being, I don't know how many, how grand 10th or 15th or whatever, India is now number two for last few years, for the last few many years. And number one is Chinese, China. So there is a continuous growth of Indian students who want to go to US. And there are more than 5,000 universities. So comparatively, there are a lot more universities as well. You know, if you look at there are ranking sources and everything, but there are a good number of universities where, which are ready to accept. It has maximum number of ranked universities. You can go to US News, you can go to QS ranking and you can find out. So maximum number of universities are from US also because there are maximum universities. So the relationship is now, one of the things why people go abroad is because of the variety of courses, lots of specializations that are available, which is not available in India. It gives you the flexibility of basically choosing courses. So you can basically, suppose you are not sure and you are going on undergraduate level, today basically uh, the university official will explain you this, that you can still jump from one course to the another. So if I have made a wrong choice of getting into science, and if I have done my first year, it's not that I cannot move to some other stream, I'll lose a year or something. I can do that in US. So it has wide variety of choices. It offers flexibility in choosing courses. It is one of the country which can allow you to stay back after the program. It offers OPT, optional practical training, which means after your program, you are allowed to stay back for 12 months. And some of the program, which are basically STEM oriented, basically if they are marked as STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, mathematics. So these programs, you are allowed to stay for another 24 months. So 12 plus 24 is three years that you can stay back to find a job. And in that period, if you find a job, if your employer is ready to sponsor you, then, the, then you as a student can go off can convert your F1 visa to H1 visa. So it is student, you can go as a student, but then you end up as an employee of that organization. So it gives you that flexibility to convert your F1 visa to H1 visa. 
H1 visa is normally for three years and further you need for another three years. And after six years, you can apply for your green card. So long-term settlement is possible, though long process, but it is possible. So most of the students basically go, they basically uh, work and they settle. That's why US is called the land of immigrants. Now let's look at the second country. Why Canada? Now Canada is a bilingual country. It has got English and French population. So comparatively, there are not many English universities, English teaching universities in Canada. So getting admission in Canada is overall difficult in comparison to US or UK, okay? The education is subsidized, so it's more affordable. And it too, like US offers wide variety of courses. It also offers flexibility in choosing courses. So you can also do a mix and match as it is available in US. It allows students to stay back. Now here, it depends basically, you can stay back from eight months to three years. So if you are going for an eight month program, you get an eight month of post-study work. If you are going for a 12 month program, you get 12 months of post-study work. If you're going for 18 months of program, you get 18 months of post-study work. If you are going for 24 months of program, then you get three years of post-study work. It, if it is a two year program, you get three years of post-study work. So that's, that allows you to sufficient time to basically find job. Once you find a job, you can apply for PR because Canada is based on point based. So with your education in Canada, with your work in Canada, you would get enough points to qualify for PR. There are certain areas, you know, where Atlantic pilot program, all those basically, which can help you to get your PR fast, but overall you can get your PR in two years. The next is why UK? Uh, one, because uh, people prefer UK. One, because they find close proximity to India. British has ruled us for 200 years. So we find some cultural similarity. In, uh, in, we follow the British law. If you want to pursue law, then probably UK would be the good destination to go because uh, the law are similar. So uh, most of the Indians who want to go for pursuing law choose UK. Okay, our 15 years of education is acceptable. Okay, in US, Canada, there are many universities which may require 16 years of uh, education. So our bachelor's, BCom, BA, BSc, they are all 15 years. Engineering is a 16 years program or architecture or those programs are directly can apply. So pharmacy students can directly apply. But students who are 15 years of education, may find it basically that because they may have not have so many choices in USA and Canada as compared to UK. UK accepts 15 years of education. Getting admission in UK is comparatively easy because they don't have so many of admission requirements. Admission requirements in USA are the most. Then you have Canada and probably UK in comparison to both doesn't have so many admission requirements. So it's comparatively easy to get admissions. It also has good number of ranked universities. If I talk about USA being num leader, the second country that has maximum number of ranked universities is UK. The duration of the program is less in compared to US and UK. So if you're doing your bachelor's in UK, it is normally three years, unless until uh, you want to do it from Scotland, which is more bachelor's is four years, okay? Similarly, if you want to do master's in UK, it is one year or MBA is one year, okay? Some programs are internship based, so they may be two years. So you are going to save one year comparatively because USA masters are for two years, Canada masters are for two years, uh, bachelors are for four years in US, four years in Canada, whereas it is three years in UK. So you save a year when you apply to UK. Saving a year also means saving cost, saving time, saving energy effort and saving the cost, money, money, which is very important for study abroad. It also offers wide variety of courses. So a lot of choices available, uh, but it doesn't have the flexibility. If you decide a course, probably you may not be able to jump to some other course. So you will have to decide it. Unlike US Canada, where you can jump from one course to the another, here you will have to decide that this is the program that I want and you will have to stick to that program. It allows students to stay back after study. So post-study work is available. So two years of post-study is available. Now let's take the example of US. 
if you are going for us um, you get one year of opt you get uh, stem programs you get three years of uh, to stay back but you will need a employer to sponsor you to get convert your student visa to work visa so that you can uh, your work visa is normally for three years but you need an employer whereas in uk there is no conditions like that you can work for two years so you can look for a job for two years so comparatively that way basically you are allowed to stay back for two years in us you have stem programs which are for three years which is good enough time people also find job within six months to find enough one year also is a good time normally within six months within three months they find the job most of the students 50 percent or 40 percent of the students find the job before ending the program because university also has the placement division and they have the career service so all these things also help uh, basically to find a job in us in canada in uk so these are some of the fish systems delivered in uk you are allowed two years of post study work in canada you are if you are allowing for two years program three years of post study work if you are going for anything less than two years then it depends on the duration of the program same number of uh, work work post study work is available in usa for not for non stem programs it's one year for stem programs is three years in uk uh, i you know some may disagree with this you know uh, probably you know this is based on my experience long term settlement is comparatively difficult long term settlement is comparatively difficult because you are going on a tier 4 student visa which allows you for two years post study work then probably you may have to get into a program or you may have to convert yourself to a tier 2 which allows you to work indefinitely for you to basically get into a long term settlement you need 5 years basically you need to work for 5 years in uk so if you are ready to work if you are working for 5 years you can apply for british passport so uh, because of uk employment uh, you know is comparatively less uh, compared to us canada and because um, you know converting from tier 4 to tier 2 I find it comparatively difficult as compared to US and Canada. Okay, now let's go to the comparison chart. Okay, I have divided on base of these few parameters and which I find feel is important. I find it very important, in fact, because there is no such comparison chart available where you can directly compare country A with country B and country C and C. What is best for you? So, in terms of number of universities, there are more than five thousand universities in U US. So, you have more choices of universities. You have more choices to where you want to apply, which location you want to apply, and you probably have better chance of getting admission in US. Canada has around seventy universities, so Canada admissions are reasonably difficult because there are not many universities. So, competition is going to be very high. So, if you have good academics, a good profile, then your chance in Canada it could be very high. In UK, you have around two hundred. universities so these are you know this number is given for you to understand in terms of admissions where your admissions are easy comparatively so that you can apply to that country okay it also us also has largest number of ranked universities okay second is as mentioned uk and then you canada also have reasonable number of ranked universities canada education is well known degree of canada is accepted worldwide so it's not that basically canada is less compared to us and canada but it has less number of ranked universities as it has overall 70 universities okay the language usa basically all programs are in all universities offer english courses in canada the universities are divided between english and french so there are french universities and english universities so that's why you have 70 universities you don't have many universities whereas in uk all the universities offer english language Now the program duration, which I mentioned, is in USA mostly bachelors are of four years, masters or MBA are for two years. Some are for one to one year, eighteen months, fifteen months. Okay, uh, but mostly it's for two years. Whereas in Canada, bachelors are again for four years, and master and MBA are normally for two years. Some of the universities may offer bachelors in three years and masters and MBA in one year or less than one year. okay uh in uk bachelors are three years except scotland where bachelors is of four years and masters is normally one year so you finish saving up one year of tuition accommodation leaving you are out in the industry faster 
some of the university master programs have internships so that those universities programs could be of two years so these three parameters that i have mentioned here the next parameter is core structure now usa core structure is more practical based it includes exams but there are also basically uh, enough importance is given to hands on learning approach so you will be basically given enough uh, projects and project labs as i you know practical work which can help you to understand what you have studied canada also follows same process in terms of us in uk it is more lecture based more theoretical based they give more importance to theory uh and you have exam systems like and you have grades are given more importance your final exams and all those things they also have importance for practical but comparatively they are more theoretical okay in terms of english test required in usa is more flexible in many ways in, in courses so it's also flexible in test you can take toefl ilts pta there are also universities which accept dualing in il uh, canada accepts university accepts toefl or ilts or pt but for visa purpose ilts is mandatory you know if you are applying for sds scheme uh, sds i will explain you probably some other time when i discuss about visas uh, so ilts is more preferred for canada in uk you have ilts or you can take other exams but ilts again is more preferred uh uk vi uh, also basically has their own ilts now english waiver is possible based on your 12 scores so if you get a 70% above english score some of the universities may give you a english waiver so that is possible preferred is to take ilts to be on the safer end both not from admission but also for visa but if you want you can take this waiver as well now standardized test now for undergraduate you have sat1 scholastic aptitude test 1 now this is important for admission purpose and this is also important for scholarship purpose is sat2 are required by few ivy league universities so if you are targeting those top universities top 10 top 20 universities then you may look at the university program and some of the programs may require you to take sat2 in canada you normally don't have to take anything for undergraduate similarly for uk the standard test basically uh, in terms of other countries is basically for gmat you may have, for management you will have to take gmat for gre is for non management and gre subject again is for only few uh, subjects where you want to show that you have specialized in this subject you know your subject well in canada gmat may be required for few mba institutes in uk normally not required 15 years of education you know most of the us universities may require 16 years some accept 15 years of education in canada again 16 years few may accept 15 years uk will accept your 15 years of education and in terms of cost of education the cost would be 15000 us dollars to 40000 us dollar per year depending on university ranking location so your cost can range whether it is public university private university your cost can range in canada it could be from 12000 canadian dollars to 35000 canadian dollars in uk it would be 10000 pounds to 20000 pounds per year this is tuition fee per year depending on different university your accommodation may cost around 10000 to 15000 again depending on the locations some cities like basically let's say california or new york could be expensive so around 10000 to 15000 dollars per year canada could be from 9000 to 15000 canadian dollars per year and uk is 12000 to 15000 per year you can work 20 hours per week doing holidays and breaks summer breaks winter breaks you can work 40 hours per week canada also follow the same process in terms of uk part time 20 hours per week is allowed it could be on campus off campus and doing holiday or holiday or break you can work 40 hours now regarding scholarship and assistance there are scholarships available in us based on your sat1 score based on your gre or your profile or your gmat but it is not that all universities offer scholarships scholarships depend on funding available and from university to vary and can vary from university to university whereas in canada again scholarships are available but limited because canadian education itself is subsidized by the government and in uk scholarships are limited or probably in graduate level it is difficult so the assistance ships are available teaching assistance ship graduate assistance teaching research assistance ships are available in us 
in canada you have the registration ship in in uk also they are available but it is not that everybody you have to basically correspond with the professors you have to make yourself available you have to show that you have that skill and then probably you will be engaged the salary that normally basically that i have taken for usa is more comparatively it gets around 60000 annual salary compared to canada which is canadian dollars 40000 and uk which is around 26000 visa process in us interview is mandatory you need to carry your documents in canada you if you need normally submit your documents you have two scheme sds and non sds scheme and in uk you have to submit your documents they have reintroduced the visa interview so if your ilts scores are low if basically uh, you have you have weak academics there could be an interview post study work as i've told you in usa it could be opt one year stem program three years canada can range from eight months to three years and uk is two years immigration is a little long process in us can comparatively in canada it is easy and in uk it could be a little difficult because you are going on a tier 4 visa and you will have to convert to tier 2 so that's it for me i hope you enjoyed this comparison